I'd be absolutely baffled if we came back in the year 3000 and we hadn't basically cured ageing. We had people whose risk of death was invariant depending on how long ago they were born. And that means there probably is going to be someone who's part of that sort of last ageing generation. There's going to be a point at which, you know, the last person ever is going to die of old age. I don't think no one's ever going to die ever again. You know, people can still get hit by buses or spaceships or whatever is around to hit them in the year 3000. They're still going to be probably infectious disease. But there is going to be the last person who's, you know, a bit wrinkly, a bit grey, gets cancer essentially because they're old. And then everyone after that, they're just going to die in different ways. And that's a really sort of fascinating and strange thought, isn't it? They'll be looking, but it'll be some like some sort of dystopian future movie, isn't it? And they all look back, and because I'm thinking of Children of Men, which I think it was the last person to give birth became famous. So I guess the last person to die would become famous. The difference being nobody would, uh, I mean, that person would not then be conscious to enjoy that, you know, notoriety or celebrity. Yeah, and it's a strange thing to sort of look back on and to have this historical figure, the last person to die of old age. It's sort of a, a tragic idea, isn't it? So, yeah, I hope I hope it's not me. You'd be really pissed off, wouldn't you? Do you think we? We'll, do, do you think we could live forever? Can I live? Will I live forever? Because I, I still obviously look. Nobody wants to think about dying. Some people pretend they're okay with it, but I don't think they are. And obviously, religions were invented as partly for that, you know, so we can think that okay, everything's going to be fine after I go. And I've got some sort of cognitive dissonance, I think, where I tell myself all the time, like, oh, "I'll be fine." I spoke to Dr. Andrew Steele. Everything's going to be fine. Um, so you're sort of my last, um, my last hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, no pressure. I think um, that that word forever, I'm always really hesitant about because there's always, you know, at, at the end of the day, forever is a very, very long time. Like if you're going to go like super theoretical about this, there is some point at which the universe is going to undergo heat death. You know, the laws of thermodynamics tell us that there is a finite length of time that, you know, living beings can exist for. Now that might be hundreds of billions of years, but it's still not forever. So, you know, you've really got to wonder about what exactly that might mean. However, I do think that there's a chance of us living much, much longer than we think of, you know, as a normal lifespan today. And actually, I think when people look back on us in the future, they're going to think it was a sort of weird, barbaric, horrible age, just as, you know, we look back on the 18th century or the 17th century or prehistory, and we think about all of those people who died of infectious disease. That, that must have been, you know, obviously there were, it wasn't a terrible time to be alive in every way. I'm sure people had fun and people had, you know, fascinating relationships and there were lots of exciting historical things going on. But actually, I'd far rather live in a world without all of this infectious disease. And in the same way, I'd far rather live in a world without, you know, the cancer, the dementia, the heart disease, all of these things that come along with ageing. So forever's a long time, but I'm still really optimistic about what we, what we might achieve in our lifetimes. What about with this, the sort of, what is it, heat death, was it, of the universe? <laughs> Right. What, yes. Well, that's so far in the future, though. It's so we're talking about billions of years. And you imagine what we might have invented to sort of. I mean, so far we've sort of overcome the laws of nature to an extent, right? And and by curing aging, we would have done so even more, we're playing God, so to speak. So, is it not possible that even after all of that, we've created our own energy energy sources? We've created our own whatever by then. It's a really interesting question, and actually, there's um, there's if you want to get like super nerdy and super philosophical yes. about this, there are some people who wonder about it. And the, the, the important thing, as far as, you know, you or me or whatever beings exist in the future, be they human or be they, you know, crazy, uh, you know, consciousnesses made out of pure energy or something. <laughs> the thing is, what matters to them is what's called subjective time. So it doesn't matter how much time's actually passing out in the, the sort of real universe. What matters is how, how rapidly you can have experiences. And there are actually some sort of philosophers and physicists who think that if we really cleverly engineered some device, we'd be able to have infinite subjective time in a finite amount of actual time. What that would mean is that we could potentially, you know, live forever perhaps wow. inside some kind of computer simulation that was running incredibly, incredibly fast. The real question is, you know, does that defy the laws of physics in some way? And I think um, <laughs> I'm not qualified to answer that question. I'm not sure anybody is, but there's definitely, you know, the possibility for living vast, vast, you know, billions and billions and billions and billions of years of subjective time in something that's far, far longer, uh, far, sorry, far, far shorter in the actual universe. That's amazing. That's I'm thinking of Inception um, because the dream time was slower, you know. And then Rick and Morty as well. Did you, did you watch? <laughs> I presume you, of course, you watched Rick and Morty. The what was it? It was called something like oh, what was the name of the? You become a you become someone whose name is like Luke or something. Roy, it was called. Um, you bec it was a, it was an arcade game where uh, Morty didn't know what he was doing, um, and he sat down and put this game on his head. 
and then he lived an entire life as somebody called Roy. He, you know, got had a job and a wife and kids, and um, he got cancer and overcame it, and he got go, and it was such a beautiful life, and it was really beautiful. And finally, you know, after a long life, he he sort of accepted he was old and died, and then he woke up again as Morty and went, ah, oh, oh, what happened? Because he didn't even know. <laughs> and Rick was like, ah, oh, you did terribly there. You didn't even you did what you became like a you worked in an office. That was your that was your life as Roy. Brilliant, mate. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, we've all sort of had that experience in our everyday lives, right? Especially if you play computer games, actually. You sit down for a quick 10-minute session of something, and four hours later, it's 2 a.m., and you're wondering, you know, oh, my God, I've got to get up for work in the morning. And clearly, you know, we experience this idea of fast and slow subjective time in our everyday lives. The question is, you know, can we create computer systems in the far, far future that could allow us to have, you know, experiences much, much faster, live a million subjective years in an hour? It's a fascinating thing, isn't it? It is, and that one last person to die will miss out on all of it. (laughs) <laughs> that's the strange thing isn't it because you feel like if you get to the point where we've cured aging and you've got a few hundred or even a few thousand years like what is technology what are computers going to look like at that point in the future it's a genuinely amazing thought oh man i hope we get to see it <laughs> me too i really don't want to be that last dude <laughs> <laughs> hi i'm andrew gold former bbc journalist click this playlist here and i'll be seeing you on the edge 